Hello everyone, my name is Narendra Rao. I'm professor of finance at Northeastern Illinois University in Chicago. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused a lot of anxiety and worry to people across the world. People have become depressed, fearful of the future, and have been going through a lot of uh, um, psychosomatic challenges. Now, I've always believed that if we can unleash the power of our subconscious mind, we can not only deal with this um, COVID-19 pandemic and the uh, uh, anxiety it causes us, but we can also use the power of our subconscious mind to achieve whatever we wish to achieve in our life. We also live in a world where there is so much negativity that is thrown at us. But we don't have to internalize this negativity. I am reminded of the words of Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of Franklin Roosevelt, a famous US president, and she said, nobody can make you feel inferior without your consent. And what she said was that no matter how much negativity is thrown at you, how much of negative news you read, as long as you don't internalize that negativity, it's not going to affect you. Now, when we hear the word mind, we think only of the conscious mind. But experts say that there is a deeper level of awareness called the subconscious mind. And it is the subconscious mind that makes us do all the things that we do. Now, this subconscious mind has a very interesting characteristic. It cannot distinguish between fact and fiction. So whatever input you provide to the subconscious mind, it accepts it as fact and formulates your self-image on the basis of that input. So if you give negative input about yourself, your subconscious mind is listening and your subconscious mind will accept that negative input as fact, even though it might be completely erroneous and it will create a negative self-image. You will not even know that you have a negative self-image, but you will feel the pain of it. You will experience failure. But we can use this quality of the subconscious mind to our advantage. And how do we do it? We can give positive input to our subconscious mind and unleash the power that exists within us. Everybody has this power, but 99.9% .9 of people do not use this power that they have. There is a branch of psychology called Neuro Linguistic Programming or NLP. Neuro is the brain, linguistic is verbalizing and programming. So in other words, what this technique uh, teaches us is how we can reprogram our subconscious mind to achieve whatever we desire. Now the, I'm going to share with you two techniques of neuro linguistic programming that might help you to achieve whatever you wish to achieve in your life. The first technique is called creative visualization. What this means is seeing something in your mind's eye before it becomes a reality. Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds of the 20th century said, Imagination is the preview of life's coming attractions. Let me repeat that. Imagination is the preview of life's coming attractions. Now, what he meant by that is what you see in your mind's eye becomes the reality. In other words, thoughts manis manifest themselves into physical objects. All right. So and it becomes true. So this is the power of thought. Okay. Now, um, 
I'll give you some examples of people, real people, who have used this power to achieve great things in life. I read a story of a US Air Force Colonel called Colonel Hall. He was shot down in North Vietnam and spent five years in solitary confinement. Now, the worst form of punishment you can give to a prisoner is solitary confinement because human beings by nature want to interact with other human beings. So if you take away that interaction, you can literally break down that person. So Colonel Hall was shot down for five years. Now, did he go crazy? He did not. He used the power of his mind. So what did he do? His passion was to play golf. So what he did was that while he was in solitary confinement, he visualized himself playing golf at all his favorite golf courses in minute detail. Obviously, time was not a constraint for him, right? So he imagined himself playing a perfect round of golf. And what he also did was he had seen pictures of certain golf courses where he wanted to play. But before he could play there, he had been drafted and sent to fight in Vietnam. So he imagined himself with feeling and with emotion playing a perfect round of golf at those golf courses. So when he was released from prison after the peace settlement, he went to a real golf course and he played a perfect round of golf. It seems a reporter came up to Colonel Hall and said, Colonel Hall, is this beginner's luck? How did you play so well? It seems Colonel Hall said, are you kidding? I've been practicing for this day for the last five years. So this is the power of your subconscious mind. I also remember reading of POWs in Vietnam who wanted to learn how to play a guitar. But before they could take uh, guitar lessons, they, had, they were sent to fight in Vietnam. So while they were in the prisoner of war camp, it seems they took blocks of wood, drew a picture of a guitar with the help of their fellow prisoners and practiced on it. So when they came out of prison, they could pick up a real guitar for the first time in their life and play perfectly. Now, one more example. Michael Phelps is perhaps the greatest Olympian of all times. He has won 22 gold medals. Now in the London Olympics, in the four into 100 meters relay, apparently his goggles filled up with water and he couldn't see where he was going. But what he had done was during his practice sessions, he had not only done the physical practice, but he had also visualized himself swimming perfectly and reaching the goal. And he had visualized the number of strokes that he would have to make to reach the other side. So even though he could not see where he was going because his goggles were filled with water, he kept track of the number of strokes and he reached the target with uh, less than one second difference over his, over his competitors. So he won the gold medal. Nelson Mandela, one of the greatest leaders of all times, was in prison for 27 years. Out of that 27 years, he was in Robben Island prison for 19 years. He was in solitary confinement. He had no interaction, to, you know, with any other human being in that prison cell. And during the daytime, he and other political prisoners were sent to a quarry to break rocks, physical hard labor. Now, did he go crazy? Did he try to kill himself? No, he did not. What he did was he visualized when he was in solitary confinement, how a free South Africa would look after the end of apartheid. So when he came out of prison, he had a mental blueprint of exactly how he wanted the new South Africa to be 
And what is amazing is that whatever he had visualized came true. Not a drop of blood was shed after the end of apartheid and all um, sections of society lived in harmony. That is why South Africa is called the Rainbow Nation. And there have been many, many more examples of the power of creative visualization. Now, the question is, how do you um, use this technique? Well, the best way to do it is find a quiet place, either first thing in the morning or last thing at night, close your eyes and slowly breathe in and out, slowly breathe in and out. Within a few minutes, you will be in a very calm meditative state. Now, when you are in that calm meditative state, visualize a success picture, whatever it might be. For example, if for a college student, the graduation ceremony might be the most important goal at that moment. So what that student needs to do is visualize the graduation ceremony in minute detail to see himself or herself walking up on stage, receiving the uh, diploma and seeing his family and friends applaud. Okay. And uh, so the more feeling and emotion you associate with the success image, the more effective it becomes like that. You can have a series of success images. All right. Another technique which um, which is also very effective is let's say that there are certain things you want in life. Like let's say you want a red sports car or you want a Rolex watch or whatever you want. You can actually find pictures of what you desire on the internet and stick it on a piece of cardboard and keep looking at that those images every day. The more you look at them, the deeper and deeper they will sink into the subconscious mind. Okay. Now, if you want to take this technique a step further, what you can do is with your eyes closed while you're visualizing a success image, imagine that image coming closer and closer to you. Within a few seconds, this image will get blurry. Then imagine this success image entering your body through the top of your head. This is called internalization of the success image. And when you do this, every cell in your body is infused with the success image. And like a bullet from a gun, you will go toward achievement of all your goals and desired desires. Guaranteed. Absolutely guarantee this will happen and you'll be amazed when it happens. The other technique that I would like to share with you is called affirmations. Now, what is an affirmation? An affirmation is a personal positive statement that you say to yourself. Now, in order for affirmations to work, there are three requirements. It must be personal. It must be in the present tense and it must not contain a negative. Let me give you an example. For example, supposing some somebody wants to quit smoking. It will not work if you keep saying I will not smoke anymore. I will not smoke anymore. I will not smoke anymore. Even though it is personal, it contains a negative. The right affirmation would be I am a non smoker. I am a non smoker. It is personal. It is in the present tense and it does not contain a negative. So you can have a series of affirmations for all the goals and desires that you wish to achieve. And the more number of times you verbalize them, the deeper and deeper they will sink into your subconscious mind. And you will be amazed to see that you start achieving those goals one after another, one after other. It's going to happen. Now, if you don't wish to verbalize these affirmations, what you could also do is write them down in the present tense on a piece of paper. So during the course of the day, 
you can take out that paper and look at it. Okay, the more number of times you look at it, the more it goes into your subconscious mind. All right, and it will come true. So these two techniques, creative visualization and affirmations will help you to achieve whatever you wish to achieve in your life. You will be able to unleash the power of your subconscious mind using these two techniques. And I would also like to share with you before I close about the most important quality required for success in life. In my opinion, it is perseverance. What is the meaning of perseverance? Never ever giving up. Now, there is a true story that I'm going to share with you. Can you imagine for a second of a world without electric light? Do you know who invented the light bulb? It was Thomas Alva Edison. Now, the biggest challenge that Mr. Edison faced was every time he tried a new substance as the filament in his bulb, it used to burn out. And it seems he tried 5,000 different substances and every time it used to burn out. So after the 5,000th attempt, it seems a reporter came up to Mr. Edison and said, Mr. Edison, why do you still persist? You have tried 5,000 times and you have failed. Don't you know that we were meant to light our way through life with lanterns and candles like our parents and grandparents? It seems Edison smiled at the reporter and said, My son, you don't know how the world works. I have not really failed. I have only discovered 5,000 ways that will not work. That means I am 5,000 ways closer to the way that will work. And he persisted and the rest is history. So perseverance is tenacity. Perseverance means tenacity. That is perhaps the most important quality required for success in life. And also, you know, Every morning when we wake up, let us all wake up with a positive attitude. And if we start the day on a positive note, no matter what happens during the course of the day, it's not going to really affect us. So I'm going to share a quote with you. What's exciting about life is that every morning offers a brand new day with unlimited possibilities. Yesterday's mistakes and regrets belong to yesterday. Today is a clean slate, a chance to start over, to do or become anything you want, a chance to go for it. So jump into life with both feet, head held high, expecting the best. You may be surprised at how often that's, uh, that's exactly what you will get. And I would like to close with uh, uh, two more um, quotations. One is a short poem. It's called title don't quit when things go wrong as they sometimes will when the road you're trudging seems all uphill when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh when care is pressing you down a bit rest if you must but don't you quit success is failure turned inside out the silver tints of the clouds of doubt. And you can never tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems afar. So, stick to the fight when you're hardest hit. It's when things go wrong that you mustn't quit. And finally, you know, in whatever we do in life, let us commit ourselves to excellence. There was a famous football coach in the United States called Vince Lombardi. He was not only a great coach, but he was also a master motivator. He said, the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to his or her commitment to excellence 
regardless of the chosen field of endeavor so what he meant was it does not really matter what you do for a living the key question is uh, have you committed yourself to excellence so if you commit yourself to excellence financial rewards will come automatically you don't have to chase them so commitment to excellence in every walk of life will help you to achieve great success in life so thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts with you i wish you all the best stay positive stay safe and stay healthy thank you